Joining us now is former Democratic Senator Sam Nunn of Georgia, co-chair of the Nuclear Threat Initiative. Uh, Senator Nunn, it's great to see you. I want to point out that Putin went on to say, quote, when all the leading NATO countries have declared their main goal is to inflict a strategic defeat on us, how can we not take account their nuclear capabilities? Is this saber rattling or how concerned would you be about Vladimir Putin using tactical nuclear weapons? Well, of course, I'm concerned. You could have escalation. You could have deliberate use of a tactical nuclear weapon. But also the rhetoric surrounding the Ukraine-Russia conflict uh, has been, I think, uh, extremely destabilizing in terms of possible uh, mistakes or blunders. Uh, the cyber world is a different era in terms of nuclear dangers and vulnerabilities, where you could have false warnings, you could have uh, simulated attacks that uh, lead to mistakes or blunders in a very big way. So deliberate use is certainly a big concern. The Putin rhetoric, uh, which I think has been reckless uh, on the uh, nuclear, uh, possible nuclear use, all of those things combined to make us uh, a certainly a very significant danger and challenge. Ukraine now says that it regrets having given up its nuclear weapons. So many of the former Soviet Union's arsenal, so much of it was in Ukraine. You and the late great Senator Richard Luger, your partner, helped to get Ukraine to give up, to voluntarily give up its nuclear weapons. And um, they now say they regret it. How serious is this as a signal to the rest of the world for complying well, I think with it's arms very control? Dangerous. Yeah. I think it's very dangerous for possible proliferation of nuclear weapons that uh, Ukraine gave up their weapons and were given assurances by uh, countries, including Russia, that their sovereignty would be respected. So these, these are terrible signals for non-proliferation. I do believe, however, Ukraine made the right decision in giving up their nuclear weapons. I think the dangers we've seen in the conflict and tragedy we've seen in recent uh, months from Russia's invasion would have happened much, much sooner if uh, Ukraine had uh, tried to get operational control of those weapons. They had physical control, uh, but not operational control. And it is every indication that I had back at that time that there would have been a conflict uh, much sooner uh, from Russia to Ukraine, toward Ukraine, if they had tried to seize uh, operational control of those weapons. But it is a tragedy for Ukraine and tragedy for nonproliferation. And of course, Ukraine is going to have to have security assurances in the future uh, in some form if they're going to have uh, any sense of believability about uh, protecting their own sovereignty. I wanted to, while I'm talking to you, ask you about Jimmy Carter. As you know, he's decided to go home and have hospice care to be close to Rosalind uh, as he goes through this very difficult passage. You work so closely with him. He gives you credit for uh, heroically, politically, uh, standing up on the Panama Canal Treaty and other major initiatives. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's you, you both Georgians, former farmers. Talk to me about Jimmy Carter and his character. Andre, a remarkable leader, a remarkable human being, and he married a remarkable partner in Rosalind. Uh, Jimmy Carter had deep faith and has deep faith. He basically also evidenced that faith by uh, good works. He set uh, an example as a role model and a moral leader for all of us. And I think that that moral leadership uh, is enormously, enormous contribution to the world. He believed in equal opportunity for all. He had uh, the conviction that human rights uh, should be uh, employed globally around the world, and he made a huge difference on that score. So I think Jimmy Carter is indeed a role model for future political leaders and for future moral leaders. He certainly was an inspiration to me as a young correspondent covering him. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Senator Nunn, for being with us today. I, Andre, yeah, can I ahead. give you one other, one other note? Uh, there are some bright spots in the nuclear uh, equation, even though we see nothing but dark clouds. There's going to be an under, undertaking, uh, an independent review of all the ways that we could have blunders or mistakes in the cyber era. This will be unilateral by the United States. 
but I hope it will spread to all the nuclear weapon states because the chances of blunder or accident in a cyber world have gone up. The chances of false warning have gone up, and uh, that means that we really need to do everything possible to give ourselves the tools to make sure we don't make a mistake or blunder. And of course, Ukraine and the uh, events there have made all of these things more dangerous. So that review will take place. It's not a treaty, it's not an agreement, but it uh, can be an example for all the nuclear weapon states to conduct their own internal uh, fail-safe review. Enormously important from my perspective.